So in my last video, I talked about how I was learning more about Hono and HTMX, and I decided to go through the docs after making that video. And I realized that they have a JSX render. I was kind of making templates like just with using functions and template literals. And they actually have like this renderer function that you can define where you can create like a layout here. And the JSX render allows you to basically put JSX inside of your different pages. You can also pass some context when you call c.render and that context can be used up here in your layout. So for example, in my application, we have high hard coded and I think what I'm going to try to do in this video is get this to be passed in with context. So let me show the app real quick. It's just a to-do list application. I plan to make this like a questionnaire application. But all this is with HTMX. And I have like loading indicators for when you click delete. And also when you create stuff. But up here it says hi, not the best experience. I'm trying to do like a file-based routing approach where all of the related functionality for a page is actually embedded inside that page itself. Let me zoom in a little bit. So in the router, I call register home, which calls this, which is calling all of these different router registration endpoints. And this is where I'm kind of accepting uh, the HTMX postbacks and the delete calls. And I just do a couple of database updates and then I render some stuff back. Okay. But for the main page here, what I want to do is I want to actually pass some context here. So you can actually just put another comma here and I can say title and I can say, my to do's or something. We are getting a little TypeScript error, which we'll fix in a second, but let's go to our main renderer and let's just pass in title here. And the title could again be passed in to this layout. Go to the layout, and this is just like normal React, which is pretty nice. Like, um, let's just go ahead and do that. And now we have the title, and we can sh hopefully display that title. So again, this is also getting a TypeScript error. So let's go back to the docs and try to figure out how they're passing a title in. So over here, they declare a module where they kind of allow you to overwrite, um, I guess, what's in the context here. So we're going to have content, and then we're going to have title here. Okay, so that's going to get passed in. Now this is happy. If you look over here, this is happy as well. I might make the props optional so that this is no longer complaining. All right, so now the idea is if I go back to my app, it says my to-dos up here, and I can change the title on whatever page I want. So I do plan to make a questionnaire application instead of a to-do list application. So we need to kind of refactor some of this stuff. So let's just start with just making a hard-coded list of questions. So I can say const questions is equal to an array. And then we could have a question here that says, and we'll say how many employees does your company have? And then we could say answers. Go ahead and put all these in. Okay, and so what we want to do is we want to basically loop over these questions down here. So instead of looping over to do's, we'll loop over the questions. And for every question, we'll just go ahead and pass in that question like this. This form can go away for now. And the question, we need to make a question component. So let's go up here. We'll change that. Make that a question. This needs to be a question. And question will be a type of this. I could say type question is equal to type of questions and we want to get like the first okay so this should hopefully yeah, have an answer and a question here so let's move this up get rid of the database stuff for right now and the way the question component should work is we should probably render out every answer um, also let's just display the question so we'll say question dot question and then over here, we'll have a UL, and then we'll have a map. Yeah, I guess we just have ChatGPT do it all for us, delete some of the stuff. And so let's double check this code. Basically, we loop over every answer. We make an LI. We make an input with a label. Uh, okay, this all looks good. Let's look at the UI first, and here we have a basic questionnaire. Let's style it a little bit. So over here, we'll say this is a class of flex call. Put them on one line, get rid of item center. There we go. And then for every li that we're rendering out, we want some space. So I can say flex. Actually, I could say space y of four. Okay, you can click it. Awesome. Let's also put some space between these two things. So we can say this is a class, a flex gap of four, maybe two. For this, we can make this a text of 2xl, font bold. 
maybe even 4XL. That's a little bit too much. Okay, we can make this class equals base. Make this 4XL. This could be class of space Y8. How many members? Okay. That needs some more spacing on it. So I think this, instead, we got to say space Y of 4 as well. There. So really basic questionnaire site. So now the next thing is when we click on these things, we want to store them somewhere, either local storage or in the the session of the user. And what we're going to do is we're going to add an endpoint for when someone clicks on this input. Okay. So we're going to go here and we'll say, we'll say responses. Okay. And the user, when they click on a response, we need to get like a, an, a question ID here. So let's just add an ID of one here. So we know what question they're answering for the answer itself. Um, we could just store the index for right now. Probably fine. So instead of answer here, we should probably say question dot ID. Okay, so we're basically going to post a response to question of ID. And we also need to paste in what index. Okay, so here we have the answer, but we can also get the index here. So IDX, which should be the index. And in HTMX, there's a way to say HX, I think it's includes. Um, let's go to the HTMX docs. I think it's called includes. Okay, so it's hx include and then you pass in the name or a list of things that you want to include. So over here, technically what we could do is we could say, make a hidden input called answer. Yeah, we'll make a hidden input called answer idx. And this will take an idx. Okay. And then what we're going to do is over here we have hx includes. It's actually just hx include and we can include uh, this. I might have to actually like interpolate this to be question.id. Yeah, let's do this. Let's see. So basically we're going to take this hidden input and that is what we want to include there. So we'll have to back tick this. Right, this is getting, getting kind of crazy. Okay, so the idea is now if I have a responses endpoint down here, I should be able to say app.post slash responses, the question ID. And I think we should be able to get the form data. So like, let's just go ahead and get um, the form data. I think we can also get the question ID like this and get the answer index from form data dot get answer IDX string. Okay. And let's just console log both of these things and then let's return empty string back. So at some point we want to set a cookie, right? We'll say that cookie. And then the browser could hopefully use that cookie to determine what answers you have. So let's go back. Go back over here and just try this out. If I were to click on any of these. Okay. It did a post to the endpoint. Okay. We got back an empty string. But if we look at our console, we got back a question ID of one. Then we also got back an answer IDX of null. And then also, I don't think I want to do an HX swap. I can get rid of the HX swap in the target, I think. Look at this. Let's look at the hidden input. Does it have a value of three? It does. And it says one hyphen three. We're trying to get an input with a name of one hyphen three. Okay, so looking over here, the issue is I'm actually passing one hyphen four instead of like a, uh, answer IDX. I need to figure out how to not do that. So this would actually be, I think I actually need to call this like, let's just call it data name and the name could just be answer IDX. Okay. And now this should look for data name instead. And let's try this again. Let's click it. Go ahead and look at this. Look at the payload answer IDX of three and it's hitting the responses endpoint. Cool. Okay, so now the next step is when this comes over the wire, we do have this data. Can we store it in a cookie? So I don't know how to store a cookie. I'm guessing it's C dot response dot. Do they have like a cookie method already? Look at cookies. You have a cookie helper and you can set a cookie like this. 
but let's try that out. I'm just going to go ahead and just say set cookie. Uh, we have to import this somehow. We can call this cookie uh, responses, and then we could store. Here's the tricky part. We're going to have to get the current cookie, if there is one. So we might have to say get cookie. And then we'll say get cookie of C responses. And then if there is no responses, we're going to go ahead and say responses is equal to an empty array. I think this is going to be a string, so like we're going to have to basically do a JSON dot parse. If there's no string set, then we could just default it to something like this. And that should make it an object. And then we should just be able to say responses of question ID, answer ID. Okay, let's try that. And then we can set it by saying JSON uh, stringify will pass back responses and uh yeah let's see how this works so now um every time i click on an answer it should be setting a cookie on my my user's browser right so if i go to application and go to cookies and clear everything refresh the page just in case i'm gonna click on this and now we have responses that get set um, and again, it's just going to have like the question ID and then the answer ID in this. And so like, if they were to, again, click on a response, I could just go ahead and console log what responses is. So if I click on, for example, this, you'll see that we get one, two, it's already there. It's stored. Okay. So you might ask, well, why are we doing this? Um, this is going to help us basically be able to pre-populate the fields if they were to come back to the page. Okay, so now when this page loads, we need to get these responses out. So we could technically just like put this here, get the current responses that the user has made, and we can pass that in like this. Um, we will have to go to the index and allow that to take in a responses, which will be a record string of string. Okay, um, and now, uh, yeah, I guess this has to be passed into question. So again, we could say responses responses we'll take that same structure there we'll pass it here and then hopefully uh the note this thing's checked we just need to make sure that this thing is equal to the idx to string i think idx though yeah that should be good okay so now the point of that if i go over here and just like refresh my page. Notice that it's checked. Okay. Now, right now I'm using checkboxes. These should probably be radios instead of checkboxes. So type, I can say radio. If I do that, they all need to have the same name. So in this case, I could say like, um, yeah, I could just do the question ID, I think. Cool. Simple enough. So now I can actually track the answers that the users did. And so if I have like a multi-step questionnaire wizard, all this will be stored in a cookie. Hopefully it doesn't go over the limit of a cookie. I think there's like certain size of cookies. I think the max size is four kilobytes for a cookie. So I could potentially get over that. We'll have to figure out. Um, right now it's at 32. So depending on how many questions you have, we may hit that limit and then I'll have to switch this to something else. Uh, HTMX may have a way to store stuff in local storage. I'm not really sure, but Hopefully you guys enjoyed me implementing a little bit um, from this application using Hano and HTMX. Um, yeah, have a good day. Happy coding.